Hey, what's up, Stock Compounders? Brad here. So today, I want to talk about moats, particularly hidden moats or invisible moats. Uh, now, Monish Pabrai uh, is, is exceptional at identifying companies uh, that have, basically, he calls it a hidden PE of one, a hidden price to earnings ratio of one. And in order for a company to have something like that, uh, it usually has to have a hidden moat or an invisible moat, uh, a, a competitive advantage that is hard for outsiders to see as a competitive advantage. And you know, I want to highlight a, a blog post recently put out by Chris Meyer. Chris Meyer wrote a book called 100 Baggers, Stocks That Return 100 to 1. Okay, now. So I'm going to give some highlights from this blog post because invisible moats, it's an incredibly important uh, thing to digest uh, if, if you want to find long-term compounders in the stock market, which is really the key to compounding your wealth over time uh, without having to continue finding great uh, companies to invest in. If you just pile into a few of these long-term compounders uh, with hidden moats or invisible moats, um, you can do exceptionally well investing. The reason invisible moats are more important than moats that everyone knows about, uh, you know, companies like Amazon, Apple, Facebook, Costco, Moody's, everyone knows they have a moat, okay? They have a sustainable competitive advantage in their uh, industry. Uh, the problem with the, everyone knowing that they're a great business with a moat is that the price is really high because everyone knows it's a great business with a moat. Uh, the advantage of these invisible moats or hidden moats is that you don't have the elevated price because you know it, it's not widely acknowledged that they have a sustainable competitive advantage. So I just want to say a few things uh, from this blog post put out by Chris Meyer. He says, the most basic recipe for a 100 bagger calls for a business with a high return on capital. Now, return on capital is one of the two uh, metrics that Joel Greenblatt uses in the magic formula, which is interesting. Uh, so you get business with a high return on capital, then you mix in a lot of years, okay? You put that combination in an old coffee can, store in a cool, dry place, and check on it occasionally. So the coffee can approach is, you know, you're basically, you're buying stocks, you're putting them in a coffee can, and you're forgetting about them. Uh, because, you know, the magic of compounding really happens over decades, even multiple decades, when you have a great business. And, and you just, you let the business do its thing and great things happen to your portfolio. Um, the longer you let it go, the bigger the multi-bagger. Okay? Of course, finding a business that generates a high return on capital and can reinvest and keep doing it year after year is not so easy. Uh, businesses like that are few and far uh, in between. There are always competitors. People don't tend to sit around watching other people make a lot of money, right? They want a piece of the action. Hence, Coke has Pepsi, McDonald's has Burger King. Uh, you know, when, when you're a great business and everyone knows you're a great business, other entrepreneurs, other businesses are going to come after you. They're going to come after your market share. They want a piece of that great business action. Uh, how does a company keep its competitors at bay so it can enjoy the blissful road to 100 baggerdom? Uh, this brings us to the idea of moats, or as Thomas Phelps author of the first book on 100 baggers, called them Gates. I included a chapter on moats. He included a chapter uh, on moats in his book, 100 Baggers. So an economic moat, what is a moat? Uh, in the words of Morningstar, how likely a company is to keep competitors at bay for an extended period, okay? A successful moat allows those high returns on capital to persist a company to maintain those high returns on capital over time. Typical moats include things such as the network effect, 
uh, that's obvious with Facebook and other social uh, network companies. Low cost advantage. You know, I think of low cost advantage. I think of Costco. Think of Amazon. Uh, switching costs. Think of Netflix. Uh, and he says mafia connections. He's joking, of course. Maybe. Um, one of the fun things about investing is figuring out what the moat is, right? And debating it with, with your you know, investing colleagues and friends. Uh, moats are not always so easy to identify or to agree on. Now, Monish Babrai, his whole thing has become identifying companies with hidden moats, okay? He no longer wants a discounted pie, a company that's selling at a discount and waiting for it to you know, waiting for that price to converge with value. Because doing it that way, he has to find these discounted pies, you know, every couple of years. He's only holding for two or three years until the price converges with value. But if he can find a growing pie, if he can find a hidden moat, he can just let it ride. You know, it, it will compound his investment dollars without him having to find new opportunities. Uh, because he had to sell the discounted pie, right? So hidden compounders, hidden moats, is really where Monish Pabrai's focus is. Um, and obviously it's a, it's a fantastic place to put focus because, you know, who doesn't want to just put a bunch of money into an opportunity when, when it's an obvious opportunity and not have to do anything else? Just let the company, let the business compound your money for you rather than buying in and out every couple of years. So, you know, hearing Pabrai talk about that, that he's really focused on these hidden moats, um, really piqued my interest about, all right, how do you identify these hidden or invisible moats? And I think it was quite timely that Chris Meyer put out a, po a post on invisible moats you know, he, he probably follows Pabrai as well. Um, and then he gives the example of Old Dominion Freight Lines, which, you know, it's the third largest less than truckload carrier in the United States. You know, it's nothing special on the surface, um, but the annual returns for equity holders uh, in Old Dominion Freight Lines has been uh, 30% per year for the last 10 years, which is insane. It's just insane. And, and this year, the stock is up another 30%. So, you know, I, I would say, you know, maybe this is a hidden compounder. Maybe it has a hidden moat. Um, it's not necessarily clear what the moat is, but if you study the return on invested capital for businesses, um, you might not necessarily know what the moat is right away, but if you find these companies with, you know, 20 to 30 percent uh, returns on capital, that's a that's a strong indication that there may be a moat present. Um, so that that's a great first place to look is to screen companies by that return on invested capital. Uh, and one great way to do that is to look at the, the Magic Formula Screener by Joel Greenblatt. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty interesting. Pabrai also mentioned that he thinks Micron is a hidden compounder. He thinks there aren't many people who understand what makes Micron a compounder, but Pabrai thinks that it is. And, you know, Li Lu recently bought into Micron. It's something that I'm really watching very closely and trying to understand better. There is a recent um, Value Investors Club write-up on Micron that I highly recommend. Uh, and certainly soon I'll be doing a post breaking down you know, Micron as an investment because um, it is at the top of my list of companies to invest in. You know, I'm waiting for it to get down to around 45 before I start putting more money into it. I do own some now, uh, and I'll probably buy in in tiers. So put a chunk in at 45, maybe put another chunk in at 40, and, and so on. Um, obviously, there's no guarantee that it's going to get down to 45,
but I'm optimistic that, you know, based on what's happening with the increase number of cases uh, in the U.S. Um, with the pandemic, that we're going to be seeing some buying opportunities pretty soon here within the next month or two. So I'm, I've got my buy list ready and I'm ready to pull the trigger on some new stocks here. So anyway, guys, I will link to this uh, blog post on Invisible Moats from Chris Meyer. I would highly recommend you check that out. And I'm sure I'll be doing more posts on these hidden moats, invisible moats, hidden PE of one companies. Because um, there's just so much to dig into here. It's, it's really fascinating to me. But yeah, I'm curious, you know, what your thoughts on thoughts are on invisible hidden moats. And uh, you know, if you think you might have any in your portfolio, I'd love to kind of get your take on some of these businesses that kind of fit that. Anyway, guys, that's all I got for you today. Stay safe out there, and I will see you in the next video. Take care.